Hello and welcome once again to the Vinton Furnace State Forest. Today I'd like to introduce you to American Chestnut. American Chestnut was a very common tree in the eastern and northeastern part of the United States and it worked its way down the Appalachian mountain chain down into Georgia and Alabama. Um, in Ohio it was probably much more common on the eastern part of the state and the southeastern part of the state and became less common as we worked our way to the west. But in about 1904, a fungal disease called chestnut blight was accidentally introduced. By the early 1920s, it found its way into Ohio and started killing our chestnuts. And by the mid-1950s, it found its way all the way to the southern extent of the range of American chestnut. And most of those trees were dead by the 1950s. But it only killed the tops. The root systems still survive today on many of these American chestnuts. And it's not uncommon to find small sprouts of American chestnut about this size in the understory. But occasionally, if those sprouts get light, like these did here um, in this canopy gap, what we are, we're standing in a canopy gap where a couple white oak, large canopy white oaks died. Light got to the forest floor and two of these sprouts got relatively large. I've been following these for almost 10 years probably now. Unfortunately, the other twin of this tree was uh, knocked over last year when this big white oak tree fell over and crushed um, the sprouts. But this sprout still remains. It's very large and uh, you can see the bark is starting to split. And normally at about this time, that's when the fungal disease infects the upper portion of the tree and they die back to the ground. Occasionally when they're this large they do produce fruit. I'm not seeing any any uh, fruits up there in the uh, canopy but we'll uh, continue to watch this and hopefully next year it will produce fruit. But normally the, by the time they produce fruit they live another year or so and then they start to die rather quickly. So how do we identify American chestnut? Well first of all the, the easiest thing to look for is the leaf. Uh, the leaf can be five to nine inches in length, two to three inches in width. In the understory, they're probably a little bit shorter, more like these that are closer to the five inch range. If you get one that gets larger, you might see the nine inch ones. But again, they're lance shape, elongated, with big teeth along the edges. It's castania dentata, which translates to teeth. Dentata translates to teeth. These large teeth actually have little pointed lobes or teeth that have a little bristle on the tip is another good ID characteristic. That bristle looks pretty similar to what you would see on a northern red oak. Um, chestnuts are related to oaks, but they won't have a cluster of buds at the tip. They'll only have a single bud, which distinguishes them from their oaks when the foliage is gone. Uh, chestnut is alternate, so the leaves do alternate. The buds are kind of egg-shaped with a, I'm seeing about three to probably four bud scales exposed. Uh, the twigs will be a light brownish color and again these rounded or egg-shaped buds about a quarter inch is about as large as they'll get. The other great identifying characteristic when you have it are the fruit. You're going to get a burr that's um, you know two to three inches in diameter probably not quite as big as a baseball. When you pick them up they will hurt. They're very spiny and spiky and then inside you're going to find these fruits that can be a half to an inch in size the chestnuts um, and they'll typically be flattened on one side so that's american chestnut fruit um, the bark had broad flat ridges and these are start this is starting to form those broad flat ridges but again you rarely will see them large enough to have those big broad ridges on the bark that we used to have the wood of american chestnut was a, a tannish or a light brown color very smooth and kind of oily and very rot resistant and that fruit was so valuable for wildlife. Um, American chestnut was a very consistent producer of fruit and their stories of the early settler days were in the fall they would let the hogs kind of free range in the woods and fatten up on all the American chestnuts that were on the ground. Um, so this is American chestnut. It's quite a loss to have lost American chestnut from our ecosystems but the American Chestnut Foundation is working hard to do genetic work to reproduce this tree with genetic resistance and we're getting in the early stages where we're close to being able to have these trees to be able to plant back out in the environment. There are lots of test plantations that are going on, several on our state forest here in Ohio. So we're all excited that we may potentially be able to see American Chestnut again 
in our woods. For more information about this, visit the American Chestnut Foundation website and consider becoming a member. Thanks, and take at least part of your day to enjoy it in the woods.